two iconic islands in the Horaki Gulf. Totally different, but joined together by a small bridge, a conservation project, and a multi-sport event, the Partners Live Duel. Maratapu is one of the oldest landforms in New Zealand, joined relatively recently by its new volcanic neighbour, Rangitoto. Local farmer Rick Braddock wasn't there when it erupted, but I reckon he knows enough to go on mastermind. So just again, so there is how many years old? 180 million. 180 million, and that's how old? 600 years. Can you imagine the fire and the brimstone yeah. and the burning and everything? And people living here, there's a par site just up, uh, just up here. They would, have, they would have been terrified, wouldn't they? Rangitoto is so well known, and it's nice to be able to talk about Motutapu's proximity to Rangitoto. Everyone knows of Rangitoto, and often uh, people don't know Motutapu because it's actually behind Rangitoto and, mm. and from the Auckland's waterfront, you don't really see much of it. The bridge was built by the Americans during the Second World War, when the powerful Motutapu guns were Auckland's crucial first line of defence. Their long range meant battleships could be hit 32k offshore before they had a chance to fire on the city. And while we successfully deterred the Japanese attack after the war, the islands were invaded by a different enemy. This was a weed infested, pest infested, run down island. There were wallabies running around that was just infested with rats and feral cats. You name it, we had every pest known to man. And the weeds were extraordinary. I mean, you couldn't envisage just how bad in terms of deterioration. I can fully understand why after the Second World War, everyone wanted to abandon those sorts of places and forget about them, because they had such terrible memories. Uh, but now, those sanctuaries represent the epitome of what we call clean green New Zealand. It's ecology back thousands of years. We're recreating what was there and what New Zealand is famous for. The process to get there started about 25 years ago, with the Motutapu Restoration Trust weeding and planting thousands of trees with the help of armies of volunteers. That provided the habitat for wildlife to return. And after DOC had implemented the world's largest pest eradication program, it meant the islands were predator-free and safe again for bird life. We celebrated by releasing the takahe and the tieke and since then we've been able to add more species to the mix. How's the takahe? Its numbers got so small. Because it's flightless, it's really vulnerable. So cats, dogs, you name it, they're gone. We're looking at something that's pretty rare, aren't we? We are indeed. So these are shore plovers. There's about 230 left in the world. That's all 230. 230 left in the world. And this is a species that used to be widely distributed throughout New Zealand. The beauty of this island, the Motutapo, is that it has a mosaic of habitats. So it's not just a planted forest, but it has the shoreline, it has the wetlands. So we can introduce a, a wide variety of species that have different requirements. And it's not just rare birds which have flourished on these islands. Ten years ago, the Partners Life Jewel was launched and is now thriving. That story comes next week.